Hey, Pioneers, welcome to episode number 404. Today's episode is a wonderful one. I say that all the time, but because there are always subjects that I'm super excited to talk about and share with you guys. And today is no exception. We are going to be talking about adaptogen herbs and how to use those for maximum benefit so that you have a good understanding of them and know how to use them, especially as we move into cold and flu season. But really the beautiful thing about adaptogen herbs is these are herbs and or foods, and sometimes they're a little bit of both, that you can use to help your body at any time combat especially stress and anxiety. Because I have to say, really, it's not centered to any specific time of the year that I tend to have less or more stress. That seems to happen no matter what. But the wonderful thing is, is once you really get a good, strong understanding of your body and on herbs, there are ways that we can help our bodies naturally adapt to different stressful situations, as well as different things that we may be dealing with on certain health levels. And we have these beautiful herbs that have been given to us, and we can put those to use so that we can help ourselves to continue to heal and to be our best, no matter what situations that we may find ourselves in. And That is a beautiful thing because we all know that stress can be very, very hard on our health, but yet it's it's kind of like, well, I can't always change situations. Some situations I can change, right? But how do I, how do I help myself immediately when I'm in a situation that I'm going to have to deal with regardless? What can I do to help aid my body? And so that is what today's topic is all about. And I actually am sipping on here in my Pioneering Today mug, some of the adaptogen herbs that we will be talking about today. Some of them you can use in beverages. Some you might be taking as a capsule, maybe a tea. There's all different kinds of ways to get adaptogens into our systems. The key is finding out about them and then choosing the one to use for us in our specific situation. So I am very excited to introduce introduce you to today's guest as we dive into this topic. And also the sponsor of today's episode is Azure Standard. So Azure Standard, as you know, if you've been hanging out with me for any point of time and listening to the podcast, Azure Standard is one of my go-to sources for so many things here on the homestead. And one of them happens to be some of my adaptogen herb sources, especially as I am looking for beverages that include adaptogens in them. So if you are a first time customer for Azure Standard, use coupon code MELISSA10. That gets you 10% off your first order of $50 or more. And they have got some different adaptogen hot cocoa mixes that have some different adaptogen herbs in there. So as we kind of start to slide into the cooler months, I tend to bring back more of the hot beverages. And then they also have, it's a brand new product. I have not used it yet, but it is on my order because I plan on trying this one out. So I will let you know, but it is a ancient mushroom elixir root beer. So really excited to try this. It has organic root beer spices in it, macro doses of adaptogen mushrooms, specifically reishi, chaga, and turkey tail. And so I'm really excited. It has raw apple cider vinegar in it, dark amber maple in there, and it is erythritol and stevia is used as the sweetener. So those are some sweeteners that I feel really comfortable. I don't like to have a lot of sugar in my beverages. So I have just added that to the order that I have going in. So I'll let you know how it tastes, but there are tons of different ways to get different adaptogens into your system, which we are going to be talking about with our guest today, which is Shannon. So I am super excited to introduce you to Shannon and her story as well as give you tips on using adaptogens to help reduce stress. So without further ado, here is our interview. Well, hey, Shannon, welcome to the Pioneering Today podcast. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm actually very excited about this episode. One, because I love adaptogens, (laughs) but... I kind of really only use a couple. And so I am very excited to kind of learn more, more about adaptogens. If 
some adaptogens. I mean, I know to be in the class, I guess that's where we should start. What exactly in herbal classification, when we're talking about adaptogens, what is what does that mean? So an adaptogen is really, um, I mean, it could it could kind of go many different ways, but I would say like if someone were to ask me what is an adaptogen, um, it's really an herb to help your body get back into homeostasis. So it helps with the stressors of your body and it could really be any of your system. So not just your nervous system, but it could, you know, benefit the cardiovascular, the endocrine, the digestive. So wherever there may be stress on the body, these herbs are going to help support that. So then you're kind of back at, you know, level or, you know, just like evened out almost. Okay, good. Because my my understanding and explanation when I'm talking about adaptogens and teaching is I, I refer to them as a balancer. They just help yes. to get you back into balance. Yes. Yep. Uh, yep. But I love that because I think a lot of us <clears throat> tend to think of adaptogens more as a stress, more to that nervous system, more to a stress response. Mm -hmm. And don't tend to think of them as in much application, like you were saying, to the different systems of the body, because yeah. it's not just our emotional stress level, which yeah. does impact our physical level 100%. Mm -hmm. But you can be stressed, as you said, in some of those other, other areas yeah. of the body. And adaptogens will also help there, not just your kind of emotional, like, oh, I'm like stressed out state. Right. So it's like physical, emotional, all of it, your whole body. So yeah, you know, you're having gut issues or anything like that. You could take adaptogenic herbs to help with that. It's not just like you said, you know, I'm feeling stressed or I'm very fatigued or something like that. It's, it's whole body systems. Okay. Which I have to confess, I tend to reach for adaptogens more when I am feeling that emotional stress. Oh, that yeah. tends to be where I'm like, oh, have I been taking, have I been taking them as consistently? You know, I kind of, kind of start to backtrack and, and think that way, uh, which kind of brings me up to in, in the world of herbalism and, and natural remedies, but with herbalism, you know, we have, the herbs that we tend to take for acute symptoms. So like I have a sore throat, you know, or I am mm -hmm. having cold symptoms that are coming on or, or, you know, something like, oh my gosh, like, oh, my stomach is like very angry right now, that mm -hmm. type of thing. And we'll reach for those herbs that, you know, we're familiar with or are kind of known um, mm -hmm. for those, for those symptoms. And you take them until you start to feel better and then you quit. Right. But then the, with the adaptogen herbs, if we treat them like that, I think we're kind of doing them a disservice. Yeah. I would so, say it's more for like very, like, um, not even long-term, it, it could be an acute situation, you know, like a, a sudden trauma or something, you know, you're going to surpass or get through, you definitely could use it for, but yes, it could be used in the like long run. So you are continually using them to help with those stressors. So if you do have, you know, a gut issue and it's almost chronic at that point, adaptogens could definitely help because then you're using them on an ongoing basis. Okay. Now within the, the class of adaptogens, I am most familiar with personally using ashwagandha, astragalus. Um, I always mispronounce this one. It's the R one. Ro rhodiola. 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 Okay. I always mm -hmm. want to like mess up that one I when I say it. Rhodiola. Um, and Tulsi. Those are yeah. holy basil. Those mm -hmm. are kind of the four that really is within my spectrum of what I've used yeah. and, and what I've looked at the most. I know that there's, there's in the world of herbs, there's so many different there that can are. fall in there. Um, but as far as safety, because mm -hmm. there's definitely some herbs at licorice root, for example, yep. that you, it's a very specific amount of time you should take that on a daily basis. There's a very specific amount of grams per day that you yep. should not go over that is kind mm -hmm. of in that safety zone. When it comes to the adaptogen herbs, are there any that you're aware of that it's like, okay, you, you know, four weeks on this and that's kind of the limit or are they pretty much safe to use? daily for say like a three month period of time. Yeah. So adaptogens should be non-toxic herbs. So toxic in a way that you're speaking about, you don't want to like use them for too long. 
Um, so they are herbs that usually don't have many side effects. Everyone, of course, is different. So I can't say, you know, one won't react to the other. Yeah. Um, but they most likely are non-toxic and can be used for longer amounts of time. Um, sometimes the dosage is even higher than you would if you were just taking, you know, something for your typical digestive issue or something. Um, so the doses could be a bit higher. You could take them for prolonged times because there aren't as many side effects. Okay. That is so, good. That's good news. Cause I know that yeah. with using herbs and in, in natural medicine, and especially with herbs, I know a lot of people and myself included, um, I would say still to this day, but more so when I first was getting into them, is I was very nervous about, oh, oh. gosh, like what if I, I, I do a wrong <laughs> dose or I cause harm or you know that type of thing. Just because yeah. in, in Western society or Western civilization, for the most part, herbs aren't used. Most people don't have experience with them. They're not an everyday part of life where in Eastern medicine, you know, and other things like that, yeah. they are even in Germany. Um, herbs sure. are used and oh, in pharmacies. Yeah. You go to pharmacies and get herbs, but mm -hmm. I, it's very foreign to a lot of people, I should say, at least in the United States and kind of that more Western medicine yeah. society. So I think we almost have a, a heightened sense of, because it's unknown or unfamiliar. Um, yeah. So I, I think a lot of people get nervous. They do. And that's kind of where, you know, I like to jump in as like an herbalist to be able to you know, educate on these things, say, you know, even just going out in your backyard, dandelion, you know, all these other herbs that are growing, they're just such common plants that we all know about, but folks just don't know how to use them. And you're right, it, it's in the US where we've lost that translation from what our ancestors used to do. And that's how they lived. And that's how they, you know, helped, I don't want to say cure, but to help aid, you know, illnesses. So I definitely think that we are on the side that's not as understanding or, you know, the education is just not there yet, but I do feel it's slowly starting to creep in and people are getting curious. And, you know, I see it every day where people just, I just didn't know this was available. Yeah. I think it's slowly becoming more normalized or even just awareness, really. Awareness. Yeah, awareness. Okay, okay, so I could maybe take this. I'm still taking this, but I'll give it a shot. Maybe. You know, so it's that, yeah, people are aware. Um, there is still some of that scaredness of, oh, it's natural. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to take that. <laughs> but um, I, I think it, it's just, you know, being able to educate people on it is going to help open up doors for them to see, okay, well, this... I could take, or this is something I could try. Yeah. And within the role of adaptogens, because well, really all herbs, mm -hmm. what is amazing is there are so many herbs that can help aid or be used for a specific condition or has a specific use. And most herbs have multifunctions. I mean, most herbs are not going to do one singular thing. They have many functions, which is really beautiful because a, from a pharmaceutical background, because I was a pharmacy technician for 18 years, most of those things are very singular. You are going to take this as an expectorant to help loosen up the phlegm and be able yep. to cough it out. And that is all that thing does. And yep. it can cause a lot of other issues as well. Uh, but most things are very singular in action. Whereas when you look at a lot of the herbs, they can be used. Oh, totally. they have so many functions within the body. It's really yeah. incredible. It is. And then it's it's just navigating on what herb you want to use for that specific, you know, ailment to, you know, aid it the best it could. So, yes, you could. Uh, and I get this question often also, you know, there's just so many things I could take for stress or sleep. Where do I start? And then yeah. a lot of times it does become, you know, preference or what you have access to. But yeah, I mean, a lot of these adaptogenic herbs are also anti-inflammatory, they're antiviral. So, you know, they are going to be helping other situations within your body and not just, it's kind of like we said, leveling it out. So it's helping what may need to be helped within that system. Yeah. So I think for looking at the, the stress thing, because... Mm -hmm. I know for me, that's probably something that most, not just Americans, truly 
most humans yep. <laughs> are operating at higher levels of stress now, I would mm-hmm. say, than most times in, in history past. Um, and so looking at adaptogens to help with that specifically, to help manage the the overwhelm and anxiety and stress mm-hmm. response, that type of thing. When we're looking at adaptogens for that specifically, um, do you have like kind of like a little bit of criteria? Obviously, like if it's something that grows in your area and you could right. harvest or grow yourself, that would have some preference. Sure. But if somebody's just like, okay, I'm going to be, I don't have any of these growing and I don't know of a local source to get them. So I'm going to be purchasing these adaptogen herbs regardless. Do you have a little bit of any type of criteria for someone who's brand new on maybe helping to select which adaptogen would be a good place for them to start? So like you had said, one of your favorites is or that you use is holy basil and Tulsi or Tulsi, you know, same. Absolutely one of my favorites. Not because of just the flavor, it's a familiar flavor, um, but it's easy. It's something that people could become very familiar with. Once you start getting into like the roots, like the ashwagandha, the astragalus, the even mushrooms, reishi, things like that, people, you know, ooh, I don't know about that. But if, you know, a, a cup of Tulsi tea, simple, easy. So I'm, you know, I always try to attack it that way where people will what they're familiar with already. So yes, drinking a cup of tea, you could get the tea bags in the store if you want. You don't need to necessarily grow it and harvest it and dry it and make your own tea. You know, you could just grab a tea bag. So Tulsi would probably be one of my absolute first go-tos to for anyone that wants to start taking adaptogenic herbs or for stress. Um, it just, it's a great nervine. It's very relaxing. It's not going to put you into like a sedative type of state so it's not it's not a sedative so it's not going to make you drowsy you could you know use it all day if you wanted to um and i would say starting with a tea or a tincture would probably be my go-to tea um i like to sit down and have a cup of tea some folks they don't have the time to do that so a tincture would then be an alternative for them to get the herb into them to start you know feeling those effects of the nervine okay and then because you said you could have it all day or you could have one cup. And that's when we get into dosing. And so mm-hmm. as we're kind of saying with the adaptogens, it's not really like, oh, I'm feeling stressed today. I'm going to drink this cup of tea, which can help in the moment. I'm okay. not saying that it doesn't. But for me anyways, I have noticed myself, it's a better overall therapeutic effectiveness is if I'm taking it daily. Yes, I, I agree. But if someone's just starting and hasn't, you know, that one cup of tea might be enough for them to start with. So I feel like that's like an easy, you know, gateway into learning about herbs is, you know, having that one cup of tea and then, you know, maybe making two cups of tea. We make it here in a half gallon and pop it in the fridge and we drink it as iced tea all the time just because, you know, especially now in the summer, it's great as an iced tea. So it's just kind of meeting people where they're at to see where they're comfortable with starting. So, you know, is it a cup of tea or are you drinking a quart a day? It's really, you know, and then I think as they see the progression and the, you know, they're feeling better, um, they're going to want to drink more or take more tincture if, you know, they realize, oh, this is, I'm starting to feel the effects of this. Yeah. And one of the things too is, I think key, and I th- I'm speaking from my own experience and not just with herbs, even like with food and just life in general, is being more aware of our body's response and how we're feeling and how we're reacting mm-hmm. to things. Because I tend to be someone who really doesn't pay attention until it's screaming, like until I am forced yeah. to pay attention to it right. because it's gotten to such an un bearable point really. Um, but then if once, then once I'm in tune with it and I'm like, okay, let's really see, like, if I eat this food, is it worse or is it less that whole type of thing? And then applying that even with herbs and seeing like, how do I really feel after touching this, after smelling this? And then of course, if I'm ingesting it, Mm -hmm. but really paying attention to that, because I think a lot of our problems and speaking really for myself, but I'm sure I can't be alone is we become accustomed to not paying attention to what's going on in our bodies because we're so busy and we're just going to push through. And and we, we kind of almost become 
immune to what our body's trying to tell us, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and I mean, you spot on, you want to see how you're reacting to it. And like I said, adaptogens usually are non-toxic. We actually had someone come to us and say they broke out in a rash from having Tulsi. And it was the first time I've ever, ever heard of it. And we were like, okay, so clearly the, the woman had stopped taking it. I mean, as anyone probably would, but it's just, you, you need to learn your body and you're right as such a fast paced, you know, world we're living in. We sometimes don't think to sit down and to, you know, if you make your cup of tea, sip it, smell it, see how it feels, just sit with it for a moment. And that, you know, has a lot to do with herbalism and plant study is really just learning the plant itself and then how it's reacting. Does it feel good? Does it not feel good? If it doesn't feel good, okay, let me try something else. And a lot of people just say, well, then none of these work. You know, this one herb, uh, it, it made me feel, you know, terrible. They all, they all don't work. So it, it's, yeah. you know, you have to always be meeting people kind of in the middle to see where they're at to then take that next step. Yeah. It, you know, the other thing that I see a lot with herbs and it, this would carry over definitely with into the adaptogens too. And I'm sure you have as well is, is someone taking one cup of tea and maybe they do a cup of tea for four days or for five days even, and are like, I didn't notice any difference. So herbs really don't work as well as, as other things. Um, and one, maybe that is not the adaptogen herb for them. Right. Um, or two, a, a dosing issue. Sure. Yeah. Um, we, we always say, give it at least two weeks or so to see any, you know, the herb needs to acclimate to your body. So again, everyone is so different. I could take something and feel effects immediately. You could take something and it could take two, three weeks. So we always say to try, you know, that, that two week is kind of where you should start feeling something or maybe not feeling anything at all, which is fine too, because some herbs just aren't going to work with you, but yeah, it, you do need to give it time. It's not that magic pill that's just going to, you know, say, oh, okay, my headache's gone now. You know, the, the herbs work themselves through your body in the correct way where you're going to be getting to the root of the issue and not just masking what you may be feeling. Yeah. So for someone when they're first starting out with adaptogens, and this is true for any herb, by the way, actually any, any new food, any herb, and even prescription and over-the-counter medications, because there's some people who can take, for example, Tylenol just fine. And then there's other people that can have reactions. And so it's always to take a very small dose or a few small bites of something um, first mm -hmm. and that paying attention thing, see if you feel anything or exhibit anything. Right. Um, and then, you know, then have a little bit more until you know, but with that being said, so starting out with that first cup, for example, for doing mm -hmm. this tea or first, first, uh, dropper full of doing a tincture and say you do it for a couple of days, knowing it could take up to a, a full couple of weeks before you're mm -hmm. really going to notice anything with in the adaptogen realm. But how would you know that, or how do you recommend to people, I guess is what I would be a better way of saying this, where it's not that it's not working. It's just, you need a higher dose of that. And so is that or just more. kind of play? like, yeah, okay. You've been doing one cup a day. Now let's try doing two or doing it multiple times throughout the day. Um, is there any kind of, I guess, like gauge that you would kind of see how you were feeling and just go by that? Yeah, it would be a lot by how you're feeling. Um, how you're taking it. So tincture versus tea. Um, and all, it, then it kind of plays into everything else that's going on. Are you taking anything else? Are you taking any other herbs? Are you, you know, if it's for immunity is, you know, what's the immune situation? Is it congestion? Is it the flu? Is it just a cold? So there are things that I think play into that um, where you kind of have to dig into the person to see what else may be going on how then you could either, you know, up the dosage. So, okay, so I'm starting to feel, you know, X, but I, I feel like I could be Y. So, okay, so maybe up that, you know, maybe two to three cups of tea a day, or maybe taking two to three droppers of tincture a day. But I think it really, it comes down to, it's so like personal and so per situation, it's hard to say, okay, well now, 
just because you did three cups of tea, I think you should do three cups of tea now. Yeah. So that's where it gets, it, it gets tricky, especially if you don't know who you're, you know, speaking with or so that's kind of where like the clinical work comes into it, where you then have to, you know, figure out everything if they are taking something else or, you know, people come and say, I don't feel well, or I want to take this. I'm going to try all three of these. Well, then we're never going to know which one may be working best because, you know, you can't pick apart inside. Okay, well, this tincture did this, you know, so it, it really, it becomes so like specific per person. It's hard to say this is good for all. Yeah. Which actually you bring up a really good point that I kind of want to go back to for a second here. And that is, is one is I really treating herbalism, each person treating it as learning to become an herbalist, not just taking an herb. And that might seem mm. kind of funny because I think I would have thought that that was kind of funny when I first started my, my journey into herbalism. Um, but because it's, it's a completely different, all the things about it are so different than, than regular modern medicine, but you, it is very specific to each person because we all have different physiology and we all have different things that are going on yeah. and we have to really be able to pay attention to those. And it is a very individualized thing. I mean, yes, we have this class of adaptogen herbs that we know sure. yeah. um, throughout history and even clinical studies now mm -hmm. that totally. this is what they do. And we know that this is the parts of the body and this is the, the functions and the way that they work on a, you know, all of that very clinical and scientific yeah. data points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we have, we have to um, then approach that to the individual. And a lot of us have always looked for that easy button or have been conditioned, I should say, to look for the yeah. easy button. I and so I think that's so. where a little bit yeah. of, of moving into herbalism is a little bit different because it very much is, how is this affecting you and in, in paying attention and finding out more you can't just say necessarily just take this and you're going to feel better. Yeah. And that's, you know, with being an herbalist and just, you know, speaking to people all the time, it, it's a very common question. I have this, what can I take? And then you don't want to sound like insincere or anything like that, but it's hard to explain. Well, I, I know nothing about you. I know like nothing about you. I can't just say, take this, this, and this, and then, you know, call me in two weeks. It's, it's just, it, it would be irresponsible of me to do that. And sometimes I feel people don't understand that because they're used to maybe going to, you know, a physician or a doctor and saying, I feel this way. Okay. Take this, right. That yeah. that's usually the exchange. It is. So that's where it sometimes becomes a little, like you don't want to come off as being rude or not wanting to help because that's all I ever want to do is like help. But it, it's getting deeper and finding out really like what the main issue may be saying I have digestive issues. Well, you know, let's kind of work back and see what that issue may be. Or, you know, so it's really getting to know the person and them knowing themselves. A lot of people don't know themselves and that, well, I don't know. I don't know. So that it, it, it becomes like a, a mission, like a puzzle, like let's figure this puzzle out. Yeah. And to it, it takes effort. I mean, with herbalism, it takes more effort than our traditional modern Western medicine system, to be honest. It, it, there's more effort yeah. um, in, in so many facets and yeah. totally worth it sure. once you've been through it, but it does take effort. And so I can even see why there's some people once you kind of, you know, start walking through it, they're like, oh, I'm just going to take, stick to taking my, you know, lisinopril for blood yeah. pressure one time a day and, and I'm good. You yeah. know, they, they don't want, they don't want to put forth that effort. But the other thing I wanted to circle back to too, that you said is when you're first using an herb is if you do do a blend, mm -hmm. which in some instances is very good because as you get further into to herbalism, there's synergistic herbs that actually increase the function of another herb when they're taken together. And that mm -hmm. can be very, very powerful. However, in the beginning, until you know how you react to herbs and you're trying right. to identify which herbs are working, taking a blend of things is not always ideal. It's not always more is better. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Identify. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, in, in, and I see it often with sleep and for anxiety. You know, I, I can't sleep. I'm having trouble falling asleep. I get up in the middle of the night. I want to take everything, you know, give me valerian, mugwort, chamomile, all of it. And I'm like, well, let's back up, you know, and let's try one to see how that works. Because like I said earlier, if you take three or four, you're never going to know. And you're just going to be in this cycle of, well, which one is really working or not working? Or maybe one is upsetting your stomach. You're never going to know which one if you're taking all of them at the same time. So it is, it's a slow process. It's a forever, you know, learning experience. I, I'm learning daily about herbs, how they work, how to use them, how to make medicine. And it's just say it's a constant, you'll never know all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> but also that's kind of, a, I know that's, I also see that as one of the beautiful things about herbs because if one doesn't work, there's so many out there. If you keep at it, you're going to find the one that works for you. Sure. But again, it's back. It's that yeah. effort aspect. There's the effort part. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's getting people to that place where they're ready to take, you know, and if they're not ready, totally okay. Also, there's no judgment on that. Um, but it's, the, you know, you have to be ready and willing to put in the the time and the you know, educating yourself on things as you're learning about what you're putting into your body. So, yeah. yeah. So one of the, one of the things I did want to ask you about too, is you guys are a plant medicine maker, uh, based in Northern yes. New Jersey. And so I would love to kind of know a bit about how big is your guys's herb farm? Um, and how you kind of, you know, got started in that, because I know there's a lot of people uh, myself included, like as far as herb sources near me, um, I'm growing it myself because I don't have local herb sources. Like, yes, I can order online and I do do sure. that. But that also means if I need an herb in an, like an emergency or an acute situation, and right. I don't have an herb that can help with that, then I'm, you know, two days at best and that's rare shipping, yeah. ordering and shipping, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes it can be a week or more. Whereas if you're in a very, you know, emergency or acute situation where you've got something that's cropped up and you need to start treating it immediately, yep. you know, I don't really have very many options locally. And so one right. of the things I'm been very advocate about is we've increased massively what we're growing at our house for, for our needs, mm -hmm. uh, but also helping people who want to start growing some of their own herbs. And if not finding more local sources or being that local source, if there isn't one, um, right. as far as the sourcing for the herbs too. So I'd love to know a little bit about your guys' journey and and what yeah. you're growing and doing on your your guys' farm. Yeah, so um, I, I took a class probably eight, nine years ago um, and absolutely just fell in love with the idea of plant medicine. I, I didn't grow up with it. I knew nothing about it um, and literally came home that night and told my husband like this is what i want to do and it like that night changed like the trajectory of my life 100 percent um i was working corporate you know i was working for a publisher corporate life and wasn't happy so it was a slow transition into what we're doing now but it allowed me the time to you know i did a three-year um in-person apprenticeship i've taken many courses online so it just kind of continually grew over these, you know, eight years or so. <clears throat> and we started Marina Kitchen in 2015 and it started out of our backyard also, you know, we were just growing um, medicinal herbs and culinary herbs that are also very medicinal, which I know you speak about often also is, you know, these herbs we think about just for cooking have so many medicinal properties to them. Um, and then in 2020, we actually got some land and it's actually a very small plot of land. Um, we're on about a half an acre, so not much at all, but we probably have about 5,000 medicinal plants in the ground. And that is what we're now farming and harvesting to make, you know, the medicine with. We forage a lot of our plants too that grow either if they're invasives or, you know, are growing locally that we could you know, safely harvest from, we'll go out and we'll forage and we work with other local farms too that, you know, might be growing things that we're not growing. So we are 
you know, pretty much seed to product company. We're starting all our seeds in February and we're harvesting up until November or so. So we grow about 60 medicinal plants um, up on the farm, 60 varieties uh, that we then use in our products that we make. Well, I think that's a great thing about herbs because when you think of typical farming, um, especially kind of modern agriculture, mm -hmm. most people are thinking for farming is a business when it's not just raising food for yourself and your family. Typically, you have to have a significant amount of acreage. I mean, like if you're growing enough corn or wheat or whatever to sell at profit and order to sustain, right. you're looking at pretty mass amounts of acreage. Sure. But with herbs, because they are so much smaller, you're you can do so much more with an herb farm on a smaller parcel. Yeah. Um, for a living, and even just personal use, like you could grow a year's worth of Tulsi in a couple of pots. Oh, I mean, you don't have to have a, a garden in order to grow a large amount of herbs no. or, you know, even variety or mm -hmm. enough to, for your family use yeah. for a year. A lot of them can just be grown in a few pots, which oh, is yeah. pretty incredible. There's very few things that we can say that up about. Sure. And that. then, you know, using preservation methods like drying or you know, tincturing, you're then extending the life of that plant by could be years, you know, tincture wise. So it's just, you know, then preparing it in these different ways where then you, you could make a cup of tea or you could have a tincture, you can make a hydrosol with it. So with one plant, so you yeah. could use all this one plant for many different types of preparations that could be used for different, you know, aspects throughout your lifestyle or your day to, um, you know, incorporate these plant medicines into your life. Yeah. So as far as ease for people, so say someone's wanting to start growing, I, I would say obviously adaptogen herb wise, really Tulsi is going to be the easiest because you're not having to get the root to a certain size or so many years, et cetera, right. harvest wise. Um, and you can grow a lot of it. it it's very easy to yeah. grow, easy to harvest, et cetera. But if some, if people are like, okay, I would like to be able to grow some more of my own mm -hmm. herbs. What are some of the ones that you feel like, and not necessarily in the adaptogen world, because I know Tulsi is an adaptogen obviously is, is yep. one that's super easy, but do you have a few other plants that you would be like, gosh, these are really easy to grow, easy to cultivate, good, a good amount of harvest on, and that are pretty versatile or used by, you know, not just like someone who has maybe a specific kind of rare condition. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, lemon balm would be one of my top ones. Any of the culinary herbs, so your sage, your rosemary, your thyme, could both be used in cooking and then also for you know medicine. They have antiviral, antibacterial, tons of properties. Um, ashwagandha is actually pretty easy to grow. It is an annual in our area, so we do grow it as an annual. But if we grow enough we're able to harvest the, the roots. They're just not, they're not huge roots, but we're able to harvest them. So ashwagandha is actually a very easy one to grow. Okay, good. Cause I want to talk about like, like woo -woo. <laughs> um, okay. So with growing ashwagandha, I tried to grow it one year and I did not have success with it. And I'm like, I just didn't pick it back up to be honest. So how one, is it a cold seed stratification or can you just seed start it or do you direct so or do you seed start it would probably be a better question for me to ask we seed start okay. we direct so very little okay. um just because of the my husband matt he's more of the the farmer he'll so he's starting seeds indoors because we're starting them in february we're not waiting until you know may which is when our last frost date would be to start seeds okay. uh, especially if we're wanting to work with the roots we want to start them earlier okay so my, usually my average last frost date is April 30th, but we're not planting anything warm weather out until mid, mid to end of May. So yeah. very similar there. Mm -hmm. So starting it from seed indoors in February, planting yeah. out in May. So when you plant it out, are you doing it in ground or in a large type of a pot or both with the usher? We are, when we're planting it. Yeah. In the, right in the ground. Okay. Doing it right into the ground. Okay. And is it. Does it like, f and I know I could find this online, but I want to, I, there's things you find online and then when people are growing it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. here's where you can push this boundary and here's where mm -hmm. you can't. So full sun or mm -hmm. is it going to tolerate or does it prefer some shade? So we have them in, the farm is pretty much all full sun. Okay. We have a few areas just along like the, 
the um, tree line where we'll get more shade, but it's definitely in almost full sun. Okay, because I put mine in full sun, but it was in an area that got the most intense full sun. Okay. And not a lot of water. It wasn't very, it was pretty low fertility soil, but also soil that dried out super fast. Okay. And I think that it was a location. They like, yeah, they do like a little, like to be somewhat moist soil. Okay. okay. And so then you are waiting until the killing frost and then you're harvesting the root or are you just harvesting it once it kind of hits the end of the we'll season? Like hit, October? Yeah, we'll harvest once it hits the end of the season. So for us, that's October. I mean, we could have a, you know, light frost and it'll be fine, but um, we're not waiting till like a deep, deep frost to, you know, dig them up. So I would say, you know, probably right around first frost. Okay. And like how big then on, because it is in an annual situation, then like how big is the root from say one thing? It's almost like you would get like a dandelion root, I would say. Oh, so that's decent. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, yeah. yeah, they're not like tiny, tiny little roots, but then, you know, we grow Ella Campaign and sometimes those roots that we dig up are going to be like huge. Okay. So we're digging up like large, large, you know, large ball size. roots. Um, so if you had like say 10 Oshawagonda, oh, you're going to have a decent amount of roots. Like you're not going to need yeah. like 30 plants in order no. to get a decent harvest. Okay. No, especially just for like home use. Yeah, yeah. You could definitely. And if you throw that in a tincture, you know, you'll, you'll have that then for quite some time. Okay. Or you could dry it and then make tea. Or if you have a freeze dryer, you could, you know, throw it in there and then powder it. I know you have one. I want one so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love my freeze dryer. I I, it's it. like on my, it's on my this year list. So yeah, especially for the herbs and being sure you have the herb front, like t it's a total business expense. So at yeah. least oh. that aspect for your guys' situation. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm going to encourage it. So yes, <laughs> I will tell Matt, I'll be like, she said, we should definitely get one. <laughs> and it's a write off, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, then you could be making powder and then, and the, I, I use a powder. I don't make the powder myself, but I use a powder in my smoothies. So that's the way I take ashwagandha in my, you know, I'll put a little scoop in my smoothies or you could put it in even to a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or something like that. Just different ways of incorporating these herbs into your everyday life is not, it, it shouldn't be a, a chore. It yeah, just becomes yeah. habit. So you'll do definitely would do ashwagandha, say in a smoothie or, you know, a tea in the morning and then mm -hmm. drink Tulsi later. Yeah. Oh, Not yeah. A problem. Yeah. Nope. And even like Rishi is a huge adaptogen. Um, so, it, you know, putting Rishi not as easy to work with because of it's um, how hard like how hard it gets when it's dry but putting it into stocks or into broths, things like, and, you know, letting it simmer within that to then take it in that way. So now you're almost turning it into a food, which you're then, in, you know, taking, but it's just, it's helping your systems tremendously. Yeah, which is super interesting because as we move into fall, that's one of the things where I am trying to be much more thoughtful about adding some of those to yeah. our broth because I make a lot more broth and and a lot more soups and a lot more stews oh, etc yeah. as we move into those you mm -hmm. know colder, colder fall and winter months and so putting in some burdock root or even dandelion you know like yeah putting yeah. those in and letting them you simmer like fragulous you know yeah fragulous comes in like it almost looks like reishi when you buy it already you know cut up yeah. and dried so throwing some of that in or you know, it should, it, and that's, that's kind of what I love about these herbs is that you could just really use them in everything. Yeah. <laughs> you could find different ways to use them and it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I have to take my herbs, like, you know, I have to take my pills or my vitamins or whatever. It's just, it becomes just so fluid in the kitchen where you're, you're adding these into either foods or teas or like it's even your coffee. If you wanted to put some mushroom powder in your coffee, you know, it just becomes habit. Yeah. In fact, I need to get, get back into, it's funny when you talk about it becoming habit and it's mm -hmm. so easy when you get out of the habit and you're not intentional, but I, I used to put in my coffee and I don't know how, why I got away from it. Just one of those things. And it was, um, it was like a Rishi to retail and cordyceps, Ooh. um, mushroom blend with a little bit of cocoa. So it's like a mushroom Ooh. mocha. Um, and I'm like, I haven't used that in like months now. Like, why did I stop? You know, just one of those right. things. 
get out of the habit. So quarter steps is also a, an adaptogen. It's one that is, it's considered, it's not like a hundred percent, but has adaptogenic like properties to it. Yeah. Okay. I, I have my, my notes <laughs> on things to go get back in the habit of doing and yeah. harvesting really stocking. You know, you run out of it. If it's not oh, something yeah. you're growing and harvesting yourself, you know, it's so easy. You run out of something and you just don't reorder it and you keep putting it off, mm -hmm. putting it off. And then pretty soon you just forget all about it. And yep. until oh, yeah. we have a conversation like this. Right. Or you have the issue and you're like, oh, I really need that now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And yeah. That is actually why I now am growing my own Chinese skull cap. Um, I thought it's one of my favorites for as soon as you're starting to come down with like flu virus type things mm -hmm. to have on board. And I swear that I had in my herb cabinet because I, I do an inventory, you know, I was, mm -hmm. I swear I had it on hand. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't. did not. You yeah. like you didn't? No. <laughs> did not. So I'm growing it now, which is bad. And I, and I did buy some because it it, that's one of those things too. It has to be a couple of years old, you know, for the yep. fruit, yep. fruit to be there. But it's actually very pretty. It's beautiful, like purple, deep purple flowers. flowers. Right? Do, you grow, do you grow that one? I don't think I, we do grow a skull cap. I don't know the variety that we grow, but we use it a lot for stress and anxiety. And yeah. also, yeah, for colds, flus, things like that. We also love bone set for colds and flus. That's okay. Like now I have comfrey. Okay. Now, what, cause some people will refer to comfrey as bone set. Is that. Oh, so bone plant? set is a totally different plant. Yeah. Cause I've heard some people common names say comfrey. Yes. They'll refer to it as bone set, but not, not in the con. Not so not. Okay. No, no. Yeah. And they say that because it literally used to like heal like broken bones, the comfrey. Yes. Bone set is a, a different plant that's used for immunity. Okay, fascinating. So I am not familiar with bone set aside mm. from its context with comfrey then. Right. A beautiful plant has a beautiful white flower, grows to be about five, six feet tall sometimes. Oh. Yeah. Is and it an annual or perennial? Here it's a, a perennial. Okay. Would it make it, you're going to laugh, would it make a good mm -hmm. cut flower? Uh, they don't last that long. They're very like, um, so they don't hold up like a yarrow. What like it almost, if you were to hit it almost like a valerian, similar okay. to a valerian flower. Okay. Yeah. The re <laughs> I'm looking to put in a few more medicinal plants down at the farm stay, which is also a wedding venue in summer. And so I'm constantly looking for plants that will serve both Perfect. pretty but yeah. functionality. And so I'm yeah. like, oh, I actually need a few more white blossoms because of course, when you're having weddings, white is a great flower as a background because mm -hmm. then they can just bring in whatever mm -hmm. color palette they want. Yeah. And so when you said white perennial, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> you're I like, ooh. <laughs> you know, they're a little delicate. I would say they're okay. a little delicate. I don't think they would hold up well. Like okay. for the day. Yeah. Okay, good job. But they still look great. And then I have a couple of sections where I need a perennial that's a taller flower, the back yeah. of the flower they bed. Almost like, yeah. a, like, you know, Valerian gets yeah. pretty tall. It's very similar. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. I, I've got some new plans. <laughs> Let's that up. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Shannon. Yeah. This was really fun. Thank so for you. those who would love to see what you guys are growing and also have available, if they're not growing some of those plants yet, where's mm -hmm. the best, best places for people to connect with you online? Um, so our website is Marinick Kitchen. So M-A-Y-E-R-N-I-K kitchen k-i-t-c-h-e-n so double k in the center um or on instagram or also um at marinette kitchen okay fabulous then we'll have in the blog post and show notes and everything that accompany this this episode we'll have that in all the spots so thank you so much for coming oh, on this was a lot of fun. yes <laughs> great talk to you soon I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And for all of those different links and resources that we have been chatting about, go to melissaknorris.com forward slash 404, because this is episode number 404, and you will find links to all of those goodies and more. Now, if you have not signed up for our summer herb series, which it's funny, I've just had this conversation with my daughter, even though we're in September, it's technically still summer. You are going to want to make sure to take advantage of that at melissaknorris.com forward slash mini herb. You're going to want to get on that list. I'm going to be sending you out. If you missed any of the weeks, because we did start it in August, no worries. I will send you all of those weeks as well as the new 
herbs that we have coming out each week through the end of September. So make sure that you go and snag your spot on that. And it also will get you the absolute best price for when we open up the doors to the practical home herbal course for colds and flus that we're going to be doing the end of September, September 27th to be exact. So you get all kinds of goodies for being on that list. Now, for our verse of the week, we are in Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. And the interesting thing about stress and anxiety and or worry is we all know that it's not good for us, right? We all know that we're not supposed to do it. And oftentimes I can say quite easily to someone else, well, you just, yeah, especially if they're a Christian, uh, knowing that they already have faith, you know, like you just need to take that to the Lord in prayer, or you're not supposed to be worrying about that. Like, don't focus on that. And all of that sounds really good and is great sound advice. But when I find myself in a p place of worry or anxiety, or I'm stressing about something, <laughs> I could tell myself I'm supposed to go pray and where is my trust, but that doesn't, honestly, that doesn't immediately remove that worry away. It doesn't take it away. And so for me, I have had to have a, a sit down, come to moment, talk with myself. And really I have to sit and, and ask myself like, Melissa, do you truly trust the Lord? You say that you do, you profess that you do, but here you are worrying. So when I find myself worrying, that means that deep down, I don't honestly believe that he has me or that he has the situation. Because if I truly believed that in a deep heart, soul level, I would not be worrying because I would know that he works all things for my good that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, that God has resources I can't even begin to fathom, and that he will take care of me and he will ultimately work out everything for my good as long as I trust and walk with him. And if I really, if we really believe that, like we have nothing to worry about, yet how often I find myself worrying about things. And I got so excited. I just managed to spill some of my coffee on myself that has my adaptogen mushrooms in it. Um, it does best if you ingest it and not spill it on your skin. I talk with my hands that I should know better than to hold a cup of something when I get talking. But I just wanted to share that with you because there's been so many times where I have spent energy worrying about something. And then a week later, and sometimes months later, and honestly, sometimes it's been years later, but God completely resolved the situation. He completely took care of it. And I did all of that worrying for absolutely nothing. So I am trying to very consciously remind myself whenever I start to find myself slipping down that path, that I am to be strong and courageous. I am not to be frightened. I am not to be dismayed, but the Lord, my God is with me wherever I go and working all things for my good. And I need to walk out that I truly do trust him in complete faith with my emotions as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will be back here with you next week. Blessings and mason jars for now, my friends.